OK, well, the Health Secretary has said the UK must be very cautious about this new variant of coronavirus that emerged in southern Africa, while the EU has made its fears clear too. But what makes it so concerning and what should we be doing about it? Well, here to answer some of your questions that you've sent in to us and some of mine is Edinburgh University epidemiologist Professor Roland Cow and immunisation lead for the Royal College of GPs, Dr George Cassiano. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, if I can come to you first, uh, Dr Cow, we've got a question from um, Norman, who's in South Africa, actually, I believe. Uh, he's saying if the new variant has been detected in Israel and Hong Kong too, why have only Southern African countries been put on the red list? Um, it is a really good question and it's an important one because, you know, obviously, as the variant spreads broader, we need to cast our net broader in terms of what we consider to be at risk. Now, initially, South Africa had by far the highest number of cases. It's the most natural place to which to be concerned about. Um, but now we see it spreading more broadly. We really should be considering uh, restrictions that are similarly broadly uh, imposed. OK, um, I've got a question for both of you now. Uh, actually, I, I was wondering if um, PCR tests, now that the, in the UK we're favouring lateral flow tests instead of PCR tests, is that a concern of identifying this variant and other variants? And, and um, to that point, uh, Nikki has asked us um, if... Uh, if this variant doesn't evade vaccines, one will come along eventually. Do we think we should reintroduce PCRs for arrivals to the UK? I'll put it to both of you. We haven't heard from Dr Cassianos yet, so I'll come to you first. Uh, thank you. Well, Nick is, is raising a very important question there. Of course, a PCR can be done in before they come to the UK, but we cannot sequence that PCR. We can only sequence PCRs that are done here in the UK. See, it could be an arrival. You can combine both if you like, but basically, even if we um, do PCRs on arrival, uh, they are not all sequenced. On the other hand, when you have got a problem like the one we possibly have now, it is possible that all PCRs from targeted countries will be um, <clears throat> really sequenced. But don't forget that we have got the red list whereby the traveler uh, is going to be managed in a quarantine hotel, but they have a, a PCR 72 hours before they arrive in the UK, but also two PCRs here in the UK on day two and on day eight. And those almost certainly will be sequenced from countries that may, may harbor the news variant. Yeah. Uh, Professor Cow, what, what do you make of that? Because actually it doesn't cover all countries, does it, PCR tests? Uh, indeed. I mean, I think one of the things to keep in mind is that we have two different kinds of problems. The first one is that what do we do now? Now, at this point, we really do want to be detecting any of this variant that might be coming into the country and making sure that, you know, we're aware of where the risks are coming from. So PCR tests definitely now. Sequencing, obviously, is the most precise thing we can do. But even the PCR test itself, the, the genes that it detects, we're fortunate that in this case, this variant uh, has one of them, uh, a, a variation is in one of the things we detect, even without sequencing. The other question is, what do we do outside of this? Now, variants show up all the time, so slight changes in the virus. And so we really need to know as we're doing that sequencing, um, whether or not we're interested in those changes. So it's only really useful if we know that there are variants of interest or variants of concern that we need to be tracking. Otherwise, the extra information actually isn't helping us that much. That's really interesting. OK, we have another question for you both from uh, John, I believe. And uh, John's asking, um, would it be sensible for the government to reimpose mandatory face coverings, at the very least in crowded indoor spaces or large outdoor gatherings? Uh, let, let's stay with you, Professor Cal, first, and then we'll go to Dr Cassianos. Yes. Uh, you know, um, I obviously live in Scotland. In Scotland, we have the mandatory mask wearings in indoor spaces. Um, they certainly, the evidence is that they can help with transmission. Now, remember, a key point right now is we're heading into the winter. We are very, very on edge with regards not just with COVID, but other respiratory infections. 
Anything we can do to keep cases down now will put us in a better place to combat things, especially if this variant turns out to be a variant of concern. Dr. Cassianos? Well, uh, the advisors of the government will advise the government and they will take a decision. And currently, we all know in England uh, that decision has not been taken. But as citizens, we have a responsibility. And I think that the first responsibility is that we ensure that we are vaccinated. So if you have not been vaccinated, please go ahead and get vaccinated. If you only had one dose of the vaccine, please go and get your second dose when it's time for it. And if you are eligible for a booster, do have your booster because it's very important to have really good immunity uh, for anything that might happen in the future. The second thing is that we have a we need to take personal responsibility as regards to personal protection measures. And here, a well-fitting mask that is used. Now we know that masks can reduce uh, the um, a risk of, of catching the infection by at least half, 53%, is wonderful. Hand washing frequently, ensuring that there is good ventilation in the room where we are with others. And of course, always keeping our distance from others so we're not too near when they're actually speaking to us. So these are basic measures that we need to take, vaccination and personal protection measures. Yeah, it's going back to those uh, foundational basics and you're putting your thumb up there, aren't you, um, uh, Professor Cow? So, to the point of vaccines, Jeff has a question. He's asking, do the variant mutations mean some types of vaccines will be more effective against it than others? Professor Cow? Um, I, I think this is more a question for, for our other colleague, but broadly speaking, we need to know there's a variation in the efficacy of vaccines across different variants. The concern about this particular one is there's so many mutations on the spike proteins that there's a reasonable chance that none of the vaccines will be particularly effective against it. Okay, Dr. Cassianos? Well, this new variant uh, has about 28 to 32 mutations spread over the whole spike uh, over more than four antigenic sites. So we don't know our antibodies from our vaccines and from previous infection, whether they will be able to mobilize all those areas there. Maybe it's quite possible that our vaccines will partly work. We just don't know. We need to wait for the virus in the laboratory to be challenged with antibodies from us and see whether it, 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 we, we can actually kill the virus, whether our antibodies can kill the virus. Yeah, understood, Dr. Cassianos. Professor Cal, thanks very much indeed. You're welcome. Thank you.